Hi folks, I wonder if you know that feeling of missing out on something. You know, you arrive into school on Monday morning only to discover that all your friends were off doing something over the weekend and you were not invited. The stories go round and you have no idea what anybody's talking about. You feel like an outsider. It is horrible. But almost as bad is the opposite situation, getting invited to something that you really do not want to go to. You come up with an excuse, but no matter what you say, you are convinced the other person sees right through you. Well, the big question today is, what is your attitude to heaven? You know, is it a place to avoid, you know, make up any excuse just to steer clear of it? Or is heaven the best party imaginable, you know, totally unmissable? Because that is exactly how Jesus describes it, a party. Because maybe you have in your head that heaven is going to be like one long, boring church service, or you're going to be sitting on a cloud playing a harp all the time. If that is the case, get those ideas out of your head and listen to Jesus. Well, we are dropping in on Jesus as he's at a dinner party, and as he and the other guests are sitting around the table, he decides to tell a parable, a story that tells us about him and his kingdom. And this time, it's a story of a man throwing a huge banquet, the party of the decades sort of thing. The man is God, the banquet is heaven, and the invited guests, that is us. And here's what Jesus said. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. So the big party is ready. Everybody saved the date. Months ago, they've known about it for ages, and now the host is sending around the final invitations to say, come on, get round here now, because we're about to get started. But instead of his guests showing up, their excuses start showing up instead. And as excuses go, these ones are absolute shockers. The first said, I've just bought a field and I need to go and see it. What? <laughs> really? That's your excuse, a field? I mean, you can go and see it tomorrow. What are you talking about? Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? I mean, are these magic oxen that can fly or something? Even so, they can wait. The party's important. And still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. Which sounds reasonable at first until you think, bring your wife along. I mean, what better way to celebrate your marriage than the party of the decade? As excuses go, these are not great. They're kind of on the level of the dog ate my homework, aren't they? Because the problem is not that these folk are busy. No, 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 that's not what's going on. No, they just do not want to go to the party. You see, Jesus, he is telling the story to his religious dinner companions. And these guys thought, we are the in crowd. You know, we are the people who God likes because, well, we're nice and respectable people. So, of course, we're going to heaven because God likes us. He wants us. Of course he does. These guys take heaven for granted. To which Jesus says, uh, no, you're not going to heaven. No, not at all. Because look, God has sent me, his son, his king, to invite you. And you're just making lame excuses to me, saying things like, we don't need you, Jesus. We can, we can do it on our own. Or you're not really from God, are you, Jesus? Or you're not in charge of us, Jesus. We'll tell you how it is. I mean, these guys even tried to kill Jesus. They hated him so much. So sure, they're being invited to heaven, but they're not at all behaving like they want to go. And maybe that is you. You know, maybe that is your issue because God has sent Jesus to you through the pages of the Bible to invite you to heaven, the greatest party ever to be held. And maybe you're just making excuses. You know, maybe you say things like, I'm too busy for Jesus right now. Or, hey, God is so out of date. I mean, who believes in him anymore? Or maybe you just think, what on earth does God have to do with my life right now, today? And so when Jesus says to you, come, you say, hmm, no thanks. Through this parable, Jesus is saying to us, do not be like the in crowd that miss out. No, 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 no. Be like an outcast who gets in. Because here's how the rest of his story goes. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. 
I don't know if you've ever cancelled plans with someone, but if you have, I doubt you'd expect their very next move to be to go out into the street and just make plans with whoever they can find out there. But that is exactly what this host does, isn't it? I mean, the A-list guests, they've made their excuses, and so he sends his servant to find not the B-list or the C-list, no, no, he says, go get the Z-listers, go get the outcasts and bring them in. Find the people who you barely notice, you barely pay attention to as you walk the streets, because they are going to be the people who come and sit at my table. They are going to be the people who feast with me at my party. And these outcasts, they do not miss out. No way. No fields, no oxen, no weddings. Nothing is going to get in their way. In their minds, the host and his party are number one. There is nothing better, and they have got to be there. Do you see what Jesus is saying? The in crowd, they make their excuses, and so they miss out on heaven. But the outcasts, they get in. Now, he's not saying that you need to be poor or crippled or disadvantaged. No, 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 not at all. He is saying that when it comes to heaven, you have to have the attitude of an outcast. You have got to see that you do not deserve to go. You know, you're not an A-lister who can take heaven for granted. You are a Z-lister who has no business being there. And yet, the invitation has come. Every time you open the Bible, every time you hear about Jesus, the invitation to heaven is being sent straight to you. The question is, what are you doing with it? You know, have you cast it aside, just uninterested? Or are you holding it tightly with both hands, treating it like gold because you know just how much it is worth? Or perhaps maybe you think, yeah, sure, I get it. I'm invited to heaven, blah, 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 blah. But here is the thing. Heaven to me sounds dull. I do not want to go. Well, C.S. Lewis, uh, the author of the Narnia novels and all-round epic writer, he had this to say about that. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about when infinite joy is offered us, like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. If we find heaven unattractive, then the problem is not at all with heaven. It is with us. Because if we knew the party that heaven was going to be, we would snatch that invitation straight out of Jesus' hands and never let it go. Because heaven totally is unmissable. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for inviting us to heaven, to the best party we could ever imagine with you as our host. Please help us not to be like the in crowd who take it for granted and so miss out. Help us instead to be like the outcasts who hold that invitation tight and never let it go. Amen. If we really understood just how magnificent heaven is going to be, we would say to ourselves, where else would we go? Well, we are going to sing pretty much that in our next song. Let's sing together. And now, let's sing our next song together.